In this lesson, we'll be finishing the animation for the preventative compositions. Okay, so we're right here where we left off. Our pollution comp comes on, and then we come to the backpack comp. So one thing I want to do before we go in and start animating these on the inside is just to add the transition so we know what the timing looks like. So I'm going to do this in a very similar way to the way that we did our other ones where we did the spin comp, but instead of spinning them on their Y axis, I'm going to spin them on the, Z, the X axis. So go ahead, turn on your 3D switch for those and your motion blur. And then we'll just come in here and I'm going to animate it on in the, ro the same rotation like we had before. So select all of them, hit the R key to bring that up. And we'll start with pollution. And this is going to be, again, the X rotation. So you can just come in here and turn that to a negative 90. Just type that in if it's easier. And we'll give ourselves, let's say, 10 frames. And then we'll turn that back to zero. And then let's move over here. We already know what the timing looks like for this. So I'll go ahead, because um, we set that up so that that layer would start where we needed it to. So we know that we need this to be gone by that time. So I just set another keyframe, pulled it back, and then this one we'll put at positive 90. So it's going to flip forward. And then we'll go back 10 keyframes from there, or 10 frames from there, and then pull that keyframe back. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and add some easy ease to those. And you can actually trim this layer if you don't want to see past that. And then maybe even go back in here. Um, it looks like some of these might need to last longer. So just maybe grab some of those keyframes and pull them over here. So now that won't just stop animating in the middle. I'll keep going the whole time. Perfect. Okay, so now we're ready to animate our backpack layer. And that one is going to come on just at this last keyframe right here. And it'll be really easy for us just to copy and paste these. So select all those, hit Control C. We'll come up here and hit Control V to paste. Perfect. And this one needs to end a little bit sooner, so we'll just drag those back and select all of these. And actually, I don't want to select all of them because I want this heart comp to stay on at the end. So we'll just grab those beginning keyframes, hit Control C and Control V to paste them at the end. So it's still going to transition on, but then we'll just leave it there. Now this no sign is going to be inside of the two comps, so I'm going to grab that We'll hit Control X to cut it, and then I'm going to paste it in here. So we'll hit Control V to paste, and you can hit that opening bracket key just to bring that back, to bring that in here. Now, right now, I feel like this is maybe just a little bit big, and I'm not able to see everything. So let's kind of bring, just scale that up actually a little bit bigger, and then we'll have that on the edge. So it'll be saying no out here. And then you can just kind of see what's going on in there a little bit better. So when, let's grab our pen tool. And what I want to do is start over here. Make sure you have the no sign selected. And I'm going to create a mask that will reveal this shape. So I'm just drawing around here. Just trying to stay right in the middle of this stroke here. I'm going to click right there, and I just used the space bar to move that into place. And I'm going to pull this down so that that line is nice and straight. I'll come back and fix that one in a moment. And then we'll just click through here so that can finish that animation. Okay, so now we have a mask line just kind of, just basically a stroke. It's not com a completed um, fill, basically, or it's not um, 
uh, closed path. So that's going to allow us to do a nice effect on this. So what we'll do is select the no sign and now we have that mask selected. So we'll go up to effect, generate, stroke, and then change where it says on original image to reveal original image. And we'll turn up that brush size and you can see that now that fits just a little bit better. And you can turn that all the way up to 50 and it'll give you the whole thing. Now let's come over here and maybe adjust this a tiny bit more. So I'm going to pull that anchor point all the way in there. And then move that just so it's in the center. Maybe move that down a little bit. Perfect. Okay, that looks great. Now it's okay that there's just a little bit of a kink there as long as you can turn that brush size all the way up and the whole thing is being revealed. Okay, so now we just need to animate the start and end of this. So you can see it's going to go around and then down. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start out with this at zero. So just go ahead set your start and then move forward and take that up to 100. Let's come out here and see what this looks like on the outside. I want to start this a little bit later after this is already in here so we'll just pull that forward just like that. Great, so that's looking really nice. Now our fish is being obscured, so we can do a couple of things here. We can either scale all of these pieces down so they're not so large, or we could put the fish in front. I think we should probably scale them down because they're probably all going to feel quite large. So go ahead and hit the S key, and we'll just scale that down right there. So it's not even going outside of the title action safe. Perfect. Really nice timing there. Let's go ahead and just grab that same no sign and we'll paste it into our ocean pollution. So go ahead and hit control C to copy. Go back in here and we'll hit control V to paste it. And come back out. Let's look at those keyframes. So we want that to start drawing the no sign kind of once you figure out what it is. So probably right about here is where I want this one to begin. So we'll drag that forward. Perfect. Great. Okay. So now that that is finished up, let's go ahead and animate the other parts on the inside of these. Now this is going to be pretty easy because we don't have a lot to work with here. We've just got the backpack flap. So I just kind of want this to open up a little bit more. So let's move our anchor point up. And we'll just use a scale animation to change this. So hit the S key. We'll pull this forward. And then grab your selection tool. We'll just kind of flatten that out a little bit. So it's just going to move like this. Very subtle, but the no sign is really pretty active. So I think that's going to look fine. Let's go back out to our main comp. And then we want to animate this heart. So I'm going to hit the U key. And we know that we can start to see animation really well on this second keyframe. So I'll double click in here. And let's just kind of move these pieces down a little bit until they're kind of bumping up against this edge. Grab the heart and we'll pull it up just a bit. Okay, so what I want to do is have the heart kind of grow in this space. So I'm going to pull it up in the middle and we'll hit the S key. And I'm just going to go all the way to the end with this and we'll scale the heart up. And then probably down back here at the beginning, we need to have the scale down a little bit. So that's just going to be getting bigger right there in the middle. 
And I also want the coral to grow over time too. And we want this to grow up from the bottom just like before. So let's go ahead and pull those anchor points down. And we'll bring up the scale for both of those. These are a little bit big, so I'm going to make them just a little bit smaller there at the end. We'll pull that all the way to the end as well. And then make these much smaller at the beginning. So you can see they're kind of growing at slightly different rates between the heart and the coral. And you could even um, maybe make one of them bigger. So maybe the navy could get a little bit bigger. So they'll grow at slightly different rates from each other. And that just adds just a little bit more of a dynamic feel to the whole thing. So let's come back out here. And you can see that coral just grows nice and slow over time. And the coral actually ends, um, or the adoption comp ends before the very end of everything else. So if you want to be able to see those values, um, you just pull your current time indicator to the very end, then go inside of your adoption comp, and we'll pull those keyframes back to the current time indicator. So you can kind of see that finishing up. Very nice. Let's go ahead and trim that backpack comp. So hit the U key and hit Alt N bracket. Perfect. Okay, so now we have all of the comps finished that we need to create basically for the animation of this whole thing. Now what I want to do is add a few effects on top of everything else just to kind of um, make everything look a little bit prettier. So that's going to be happening in our next lesson, but I'm, I am going to go ahead and we'll turn off these little pieces here, the yellow mauve, navy, and teal up here in the corner, because we don't need those anymore. We're not going to be doing any more color picking. So if you've made it this far, definitely give yourself a pat on the back because we have created a really, really great piece. And it looks like we have some random layers here at the beginning, so I'm just going to come back down here just from when we, probably when we just cut and pasted those earlier. We'll just delete that and scrub through to make sure there's no big issues here. And it probably would be a really good idea now just to watch this all the way through and make sure that everything is good with your timing. So to go ahead and hit the zero key to start a RAM preview and we'll just watch it all the way through just to double check to see if there's anything that needs to be tweaked. So I'm going to pause it so you don't have to watch this cache all those frames and then we'll come back after it's finished with the preview. Okay so that RAM preview is finished. Let's talk about the state of our reefs. An overview. Over one million species of plants and animals are part of the reef ecosystem. Coral reefs contain 25% of all marine life on the planet. Those animals are pretty varied in their species, too. Whales make up 1%, birds are 2%, fish are 43%, and mollusks make up 54% of the animals in the reefs. But humans and our activities are actually the largest threat to the existence of coral. At the present rate of destruction, 70% of coral reefs may be gone in less than 40 years. And right now, 10% of the world's coral is damaged irreparably. Do people even care what happens? It does appear that worry about global warming is on the rise, but only 6% since 2009. And overall, it's much lower than it's been in the past. So, you may ask, what are some of the causes of the damage? Ha, well there's ocean acidification, coral bleaching, high carbon dioxide levels, and ozone depletion, just to name a few. But there are things that can be done to stop the destruction. People can apply for grants to spend on conserving the coral. Last year, millions of dollars were awarded to help save the coral all over the planet. And while there are still many conservation groups working to save the reef, anyone can help by being careful not to litter and pollute, being more aware when visiting reefs, or even adopting a reef. 
Awesome. Okay, so there were just a couple of small things I noticed while we were watching this through that just need a little bit of tweaking. So pretty much everything up until here looks pretty good. And then our graph looks like it has just a little bit of a pop in it. So probably what happened here is we have an extra keyframe somewhere. So let's go ahead and go into that line graph animation. Let's take a look at our camera and see what we have. And sure enough, we've got two keyframes here. So we want to have the keyframe that's a little bit farther over to the right. So I'm just going to delete that first one. And that should solve that. So that shouldn't have that little pop anymore where that just kind of scoots over. That looks much better. And then all of this looked good. Very nice. And then right here, this no sign looks like it could use a little bit of help. So let's go into those and see what we can do for it. So I'm going to just go into the pollution comp and let's turn on motion blur for that guy. So that should help to maybe make some of those faster parts look a little bit less crazy um, and choppy. If you're still not getting enough blur, you could use force motion blur. So let's let's just see what that looks like. That looks a lot more fluid. So let's go ahead and do that for our other piece as well that has the no sign in it. It's going to be our backpack comp. Just drop on force motion blur. right there. So that looks a little bit better. Okay, so now we are pretty much finished with our animation for this. And if you wanted to, you could go in and maybe, you know, tweak the timing of anything else. But I think overall, this looks really good. So our next lesson is going to be about just kind of finishing everything out and putting a final layer of polish on um, adding a vignette, adding a little bit of grain, those kinds of things. So we're going to learn how to do those in our next lesson.